But going down memory lane, I'm understanding more and more how addictive my nature was and still is. Why were you and still are addicted to online gaming so much? First and foremost, the competition of it. The fact that you and your teammates have to carry out your respective roles on a team to achieve victory over an opposing team of real people is exhilarating to me. 12 years in it, it still intrigues me that I'm playing video games with someone who is not in the room with me. I saw the mic like a CD radio. I can't see you and you can't see me. Let me make myself clear. As I tell this story, I realize it sounds like I'm painting myself as the victim. But unfortunately and honestly, that is far from the truth. In my next video, I plan on showing my, let's just say, unappropriate behavior on the mic. So until then, I don't have some cool intro. So let's just get to the start of the show. I've been talking trash complete with catchphrases while gaming online the entire time I've been doing the activity. Most of it is word vomit, where I'm on a roll and I got people in chat rooms cracking up at my imaginative insults. In my Grand Theft Auto 4 era, I was always on a team of my peers, so I never really yapped on my teammates. But every now and then, opposing players would be sore losers and try to throw shade on the fun me and my online buddies would be having. I remember I would play the role of guard dog, immediately barking insults at them for hating. You're supposed to be out looking for a job with your unemployed ass, but instead you in the house taking L's from top flight niggas like me and my peoples. I feel sorry for the dumb bitch who takes care of you. God forbid someone says a racist comment because I'm one of those I have a dream! Black dudes who gives you a Martin Luther King speech complete with curse words and church humming in the background. Shut the fuck up, white boy. In a couple of years, you're gonna be picking up my trash on Wednesdays and garbage men don't earn enough money to oppress black people, asshole. But if Grand Theft Auto 4 was my introduction to becoming an online gamer, Call of Duty was my introduction to becoming an online asshole. The only way I can describe the landscape of chatting in Call of Duty lobbies back then was excessively angry in tone, to put it mildly. It was like the evil side of Twitter, but with chat. I remember arguing with people for hours on a daily basis because there is no end to the levels of pettiness my foolish ego and pride can reach. And I was an equal opportunity hater. Chicks could get it too. I remember one conversation in particular where this one chick was with five guys at her party and she was trying to talk trash to me after I beat their asses in the game. You ain't shit, probable. Your pussy ain't shit, bitch. Fuck you, nigga. You know how I know your pussy ain't shit, bitch? Because it's 3 a.m. on a Saturday night and you're arguing with me on this game instead of getting some dick somewhere. These dorks worship you because they can't get laid neither, so I suggest you shut the fuck up. I completely understand that when I say things like this, the fact that my voice sounds like Andre the Giant going through puberty puts a little extra stank on the insult. After moments like that, the feelings of hatred flowing through me would manifest itself into an evil, Yoda-like voice. Stronger your evil is becoming. I bought every title between Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare and Call of Duty Black Ops 2, making six games in total. Damn, you just gave Call of Duty all your little disability check, which makes six years of anger development. I eventually stopped playing when I grew tired of the repetition of the game and began playing NBA 2K full time. I've been playing the NBA 2K series since 2K10, the pattern was the same too. I play nice until I'm used to the game, then the asshole comes out. But when the PS4 came out, it changed how you chat. Along with a public chat room, a separate private chat room with up to eight people was introduced. The problem this presented me was now I would never communicate with my teammates unless if they were in the private chat room with me. I would wait until the score gets out of hand then go into the chat room blaming random players for losses. 
I hit rock bottom when I started cussing out little kids. Well, you played like stir fried shit for four quarters. Shut up, old man! Your mom should have swallowed you. This is probably one of the worst things I said to a kid. Your mom's sucking dick on the stroll to pay your internet bill so you can play like straight rat ass on NBA 2K. Your dad should have wiped you on your mom's shirt. This kid was like nine years old. He lacked both the wisdom and the life experience to even respond to that. He just immediately got quiet and after about a minute, he quit the game. At this point, my conversation in all aspects of life is just in dark and angry places. I'm communicating in an aggressively negative tone to everyone I come into contact with, both online and in real life. When I meet new gamers, I would focus on their flaws as opposed to their strengths and use that as justification to not make friends with them. I began alienating myself from the few existing online friends I had left because once were humor filled conversations on pop culture and sports now transformed into me ranting and bitching about negative, cringe worthy subject matter that no one knows how to react to. Soon this evolved into straight up arguments where the end result would ultimately be me finding myself by myself. I tried going back to football on Madden 18 to try Ultimate Team and played that up until Madden 19, but trying to play all those solo challenges and you still have to purchase players to keep up with online competition just felt like a full-time job with no compensation. I stopped playing the game altogether in April of this year. In this video, you basically relegated me to insulting women and children. I want in on the rest of this conversation. If being diagnosed with limb girdle muscular dystrophy, discovering the disease having no cure or treatment becoming the most soul crushing experience of my entire life, marking as the exact moment my depression began, then online gaming certainly was the engine that kept my depression running equipped with the notion, in a gaming lobby, I'm not disabled, I'm normal, serving as the rocket fuel to said engine. The reality is every behavior I exhibited in the past decade has been the complete opposite of normal. I neglected my hygiene. I haven't seen a dentist since 1998, so I'm in serious need of a teeth cleaning. Except you're not washing your stinking ass. You filthy bastard. I went to great lengths to hide my truth rather than confront it. I saw the mic like a CB radio. I can't see you and you can't see me. The loneliness I discovered in my solitary confinement of depression was just food to the bitter monster I became. Your pussy ain't shit, bitch. Your mom should have swallowed you. For an entire decade, I've been amassing these statistics of a first ballot Hall of Fame loser. So now that I've revealed what I've been up to for the past 10 years, Junior, I feel like I've given you enough evidence to see how much of a coward I've become. These videos aren't a justification for my actions. I'm just trying to use these videos as an explanation for my actions. This entire summer has been dedicated to taking my life back. And I know that these videos are helping me do just that. But I know my life is incomplete without you involved in it. I'm sorry, Junior, for not fulfilling my honor of being your father. A man is measured by his ability to cope with adversity. And in that vein, I failed miserably. I'm just hoping, wishing, and praying you could find it in your heart to forgive me. I love you, I always have, and I always will.